Hello, and thank you for watching this online presentation brought to you by the Writing Tutoring Center Services through University Academic Success Programs at Arizona State University. This presentation will review tips for revising and editing. What does it mean to edit? The dictionary defines editing as preparing something written to be published or used. It's defined as making changes, correcting mistakes, etc. on a written document. Now, what does it mean to revise? The word revise comes from an older word that meant to look again, see again, visit again, or look back on. When it comes to writing, you will be looking back on a draft of your work in order to identify areas for improvements. So what is the difference between editing and revising? Editing is the process of fixing spelling, correcting grammar errors, rephrasing sentences, changing words, checking citation formatting, things along those lines to make your writing as free of errors as possible as well as clear. Revising means to see again, to see something familiar but in a new way. First, you critically analyze your writing. Then you make decisions about what to change in order to improve your writing. Revising encourages you to think about your reader's need for information. Both revising and editing are important, and both must be complete in order for either process to hold any weight. A revised paper that is not edited will remain unclear or filled with errors. An edited paper may be grammatically sound, but may lack the depth of analysis necessary for a successful paper. When it comes to revising, one of the most important strategies is to begin early. Give yourself the proper amount of time to thoroughly revise your paper. If you work on a longer document, you may want to leave enough time to revise each section separately. However, starting early does not mean you should start the second you've typed the last word. Make sure you complete your draft early enough to allow yourself a day before you begin the revising process. You're going to want fresh eyes when you begin revising. When you do start revising, there are guiding questions you can ask yourself to help determine where your paper needs to be revised. For example, ask yourself questions like uh, about the focus of your paper. Does your thesis match your conclusion? Other times, as people write, their ideas or even their opinions change throughout the process. Make sure your focus your paper is focused and maintains a clear stance all the way through. Check your paper's organization. Do you have topic sentences? Does the introduction accomplish its purpose? Does the conclusion? These questions are helpful guides, but if you try to answer every question at once, you may find yourself overwhelmed. So prioritize the questions you think are most important and start with those. Make revisions based off of those questions first, and then move on to others and revise again. Lastly, good revision often requires you to cut some of your work. Try to stay objective and don't fall in love with your paper too much. Even though you've worked hard, if you want your paper to be the best it can be, it's going to have to go through the revision process, and some of your work will most likely need to be cut. Let's review the difference between local and global concerns in a writing document. Local concerns address sentence level issues like grammar, spelling, punctuation, and citation style. Often these issues are related to changing words so that a sentence is clearer. Global concerns take a more holistic look at your writing. This means you are looking at the big picture of your writing, thinking about things like thesis statement, ideas, purpose, audience, evidence, analysis, and organization. The, di the distinction between local and global can help writers make decisions about what to look at first in their writing, second, etc. Global requires revision at different stages of drafting a paper. Local can be edited, usually near the end of a final draft. Keep in mind that sometimes a local issue can turn into a global issue. For example, whether or not you have the right sources cited is a bigger issue, more global, 
then correcting citation formatting of those particular sources, which would be a local concern. After you write your first or second draft, start looking for any patterns in grammatical or word level or sentence level mistakes that you may find yourself making. You can visit this website, Owl's, Owl Excelsior Grammar Essentials Common Errors, to look at some very common type of errors with examples, additional resources, and tips for fixing those errors. On this slide, you can also see a list of the 20 most common grammar errors to, to be aware of and use when you are reviewing your writing. Here are some proofreading strategies to help with editing to make sure your work is as correct as it can be as you're working on your final draft. First, try reading your paper from the last line to the first line. This will allow you to focus solely on your grammar and word choice without being distracted by the overall content of the paper. After you've identified your personal common grammar errors, try looking for one type of error at a time and focusing only on that. You can also try reading your work out loud a lot of times you'll be able to identify sentences that sound awkward by reading it out loud easier than when you are reading it in your head on the paper. Lastly, try circling every punctuation mark and citation. Once you have identified them, you can go back and evaluate each one to see if they are correct. Remember, most of the time editing should be done only after revisions have been completed to the content of your writing. Now that we've gone over some tips and techniques for revising and editing, identify a section of your current project to revise and edit. Pick a particular technique you'd like to use and take a moment to practice. There are a lot of resources out there that are free to use for grammar. Bedford, St. Martin's, The Everyday Writer, uh, Purdue Owl, and Quick and Dirty Grammar Tips are all great free online resources that can help you with your grammar. The best way to edit your grammar is to figure out what your common errors are and then learning the rules behind them and how to fix them. Getting a trusted reader to look over your work can be a good way to help yourself identify some of those common errors. You can also use the writing centers at Arizona State University to help identify some of your common grammar errors. For longer works like a dissertation, thesis, or culminating project, you may want to consider finding and hiring an outside editor. Editor, When it comes to finding an editor, you need to be realistic with your expectations. Editing is a paid service. You need to be willing to pay the money or you need to expect to do the editing yourself. If you do choose to hire an editor, make sure you are clear on your editing and communication expectations. Make sure you're establishing a protocol with the editor and be sure that the two of you are on the same page about how the exact process will work. If you want to hire an editor, consider these questions. At what point in the process do you want to have them read the document to allow for enough time before your due date? What are your expectations of the editor's work? And how much are you willing to pay an editor for their service? If you are looking to hire an editor, you could talk to a faculty member or a faculty chair to see if they have any recommendations. You could also try websites such as the Editorial Freelancers Association that has a database of free editors or places like freelancer.com or elance.com. Moving forward, you should begin to think about your revision plan. Here are some important questions to ask yourself as you begin to formulate a plan. How will you plan to revise? Do you plan on revising once, twice? Will you go through a paper the entire thing at a time? Or will you go through one single page at a time? Will you revise your dissertation one chapter at a time? What questions for clarification do you have where you may need to follow up with your faculty member? Are there any additional resources that you need in order to revise and edit your document? Do you need to go back and find more sources, for example? Are you going to have someone else read your document? A trusted reader? A classmate? A tutor in the writing center? Will you hire an editor? At what point in the process do you want to have an outside reader 
to ensure that you have enough time to make those final revisions before your due date. What will you, as the reader, ask to the editor to focus on in the document? Once you've answered these questions, you will be off to a good start to creating your revision and editing plan. Thank you for watching this presentation on revising and editing. We hope to see you at one of our writing centers soon. To schedule an appointment, you can visit one of our writing centers front desk and a staff member will assist you. Or you can go to our website at tutoring.asu.edu.